according to your conscience. That was how come in some time past people were made to swear with oracles. But now, when that incident started and that phenomenon started, it was met with some public uproar that, look, we should be more scientific and move away from the swearing, taking people's money and swearing it oracle. Mm. Um, I'm told in some of the polling centers, people who attempted to also video, take a video of whatever they were doing were, um, were arrested. I think um, people are becoming rational. And so if you want to go distribute money, well, you would have people who may be gullible who would take money and vote. But generally, it appears that some people are, if you look at how these incumbents had money and some distributed and mm. you know, uh, behind the scenes and all that, and that never led to their view. If it tells you that the cliche that when they bring the money, take and vote according to your conscience, it's working. I mean, and it serves them right. So that gradually we'll be moving away uh, from the practice of treating or what we call monetization or monocracy in our body politic that buys votes and brings about people who otherwise would not have mm. been the obvious choices of um, constituents. Okay. La well, the conversation will definitely continue, but uh, for now, let's quickly touch base with um, Godwin Asediba, who is at uh, the Adentan constituency. Godwin, good evening. Thank you for joining us. What can you report? All right, Martin, thank you very much. It's actually been a peaceful um, exercise here, I must say, here in the Adentan constituency. At this particular moment, a lot of people are moving home with smiles. Others are moving, frowning their faces and all of that. You can clearly tell that the streets here are very busy. I can clearly tell you that the accurate result that I have with me from the camp of John Dramani Mahama was able to pull 2,000 499 votes. Uh, Pujo Bonto also pulled three votes, rejected 13. Total valid vote caps, we had 2,502. And then total valid uh, vote cast as well for the presidential in all the three uh, polling centers that voted, we had 2,515. For the parliamentary side, which has actually been a controversial one for a very long time before everything was declared today, we had honorable uh, Mohammed Adamu Ramadan, who has actually retained the seat, meaning um, history has actually been made here because he is the first MP to actually retain this particular seat in a second term. He was able to pull 1,015 votes. We also had Na Oye Bampo Ado also pulling 998 votes, and Linda Atibia, we need the young engineer who is actually partaking in this particular exercise in the first time, was able to pull 500 and six votes. So generally, I spoke to Linda and she was happy about the number of votes she was able to pull in as much as this is her first time. She promises not to give up, she's saying that she's going to come back again and come back stronger. Uh, Adamu Ramadan has also, you know, wished the contenders well and promises this time around to work hand in hand with some of the constituents because there were some issues that were raised about the fact that he was not working hand in hand with them and that could have actually led to him losing this election. So you can clearly tell that this time around, Na Oye Bampo, Nana Oye Bampo, I beg your pardon, was able to come a little closer, which affected him a little. But he has promised to, you know, work hand in hand with them. He sent them some goodwill messages and promises to call them and try to work hand in hand with them as well. So generally, it has been um, a hectic day, obviously. Um, in the afternoon, the sun was scorching and you had people who uh, were, were seated in queues also standing just to be able to get to uh, the centers to vote for your favorite constituents. But finally, everything is done and just as you can clearly see. And the winner has been declared here in the Adentan constituency. John Dramani Mahama winning for the presidential and Adamu Ramadan Mohammed also winning for um, the parliamentary side, Martin. Right. Uh, thank you very much, um, Godwin. I said about with that quick update from the Adentan constituency. And like he mentioned, history has been made. Why? Because this is the first time in the history since their constituency was set up that one person has been retained by the NDC or by any of the political parties. So for the NDC, uh, Adamu, for instance, was there in 2016. He then went again 
on, in 2020, the 2020 election. So that was the first time that he has been repeated. And the third time he went again this year for the 2024 elections and has been retained by the NDC. So we are uh, having history in the making in a very interesting constituency. And, and uh, Prof, you, uh, you know, clearly are having followed how political um, shenanigans, as far as political shenanigans, were, what exactly was in this constituency that the delegates never really thought it necessary to repeat a candidate? Well, um, it's interesting. Um, I don't know, we'll have to do more research there, but as I speak to you now, I have a student under me doing a whole Master of Philosophy dissertation about the Dentan constituency oh. and um, investigating why since 1992 he failed to retain any of the parliamentary candidates. I mean, yeah. it's always a one-term constituency. Yeah. You do one <laughs> term, they boot you away. One term, you go away. And so this particular occurrence mm. um, uh, makes history. And I am quite impressed with Adamu Ramadan. Um, looking at the, the, the stature of Nana Oye, yeah. Na, Nana Oye and then the other aspirant, Linda. I thought... Um, they were going to just uh, walk over him. Mm. But um, he's shown that he's truly, um, what, well, over the years I've been interacting with him. Uh, you know, I used to live around that area too. Oh. And so over the years, I, I kept interacting with him and giving him pieces and bits and pieces of advice as to how he could um, help um, serve the people well um, to be able to maintain his city. I'm happy. Um, that um, at least I'm going to tax my students to go, you know, deep in his research into on F and how come we've been able to mm. get an outlier in the sequencing or in the in the rec re uh, past record of how uh, parliamentary aspirants in that constituency, you know, are fed. So yes, he's done well. I commend him, mm. and it tells you, like I said earlier. If you serve the people well, it's not about how popular you are in the public. Adamu Ramadan is virtually unknown. Yes, I know his father, Alaji Ahmed Ramadan, is, I think, Ghana's ambassador to uh, Dubai. Mm -hmm. uh, his his uh, brother is um, Abu Ramadan, who is of Nadmo. Nadmo yes. His sister is um, the second lady. Um, so he's Ramadan. been quite politically exposed. Well, but he's always maintained a very calm and cool composure. Mm -hmm. He's not that much out there, but he's working in his constituency. And that's what I've always told members of parliament. It's not about going to gain fame and popularity on the floor of parliament. It's about gaining fame and popularity by serving the interests of your constituents. Mm -hmm. That is what would retain your seat. If you don't do that, then always, you know, oftentimes you will have to go beg mm. others from the other political party to come and campaign for you. And that's what some of them do. Yeah. It, it doesn't advance the course of representation. Right. Right. And so um, it should be a lesson to all um, um, members of parliament that when you are giving the nod to go serve, you must seek to serve the interest of your constituent first. See, members of parliament, the foremost function of every member of parliament is not legislation, it's mm. representation. Representation in political science is explained in terms of acting in a manner responsive to constituent interest. So MPs serve the interest of constituent first before parties' interests, before all other interests. Mm. And so if you go and then you go, you are only partisan and you are only doing things that would help you get a name on the floor of parliament and the general body politic and you are neglecting. I know so many MPs now um, in the other side of the divide who are now quote and unquote scared to contest again because they sought to win fame on the floor of parliament and abandoned the interest mm -hmm. of their constituents and that's how come they, they can't go again. And in previous times, as, uh, as they went about campaigning, they had to elicit or they had to um, sort of uh, flat their whole constituencies with um, other top echelons from other political parties to go beg constituents to vote for them. It means you have not represented well. It means mm. you've not served constituent in, in, interest well. And so kudos to Adamu Ramadan. Right. I believe he has served well to be able to win. I thought... Oye later was Oye, Nana Oye, Nana Oye, 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 Oye was going to really 
I'll shine and I'll perform him. Wow. But I think he's done well. He's, he's made history in the Adentan constituency. That, and we we'll research about it. Right. And, and, and then again, I mean, the point you make about being in parliament is primarily about representation, not necessarily legislation. It's not legislation. I, I, I think we've almost always seen it the other way around. Yeah, we are, we are new, we are fledgling democracy. And that's how some of us, we, always, we are always passionate talking what we have researched and what we've, we've studied. Mm -hmm. I believe that to be a, a, um, to be a good lecturer and, and to be a good teacher, our knowledge should not only be imparted in the classroom. We have to bring our knowledge and what we've studied in the public domain with the view to shaping how things are done. I teach political science. Why shouldn't I comment about the conduct of politics? Right. Why shouldn't we, we be educated? MPs have four main rep, um, functions. The first of them is representation. Mm. The second is legislation. The third is oversight rep responsibility over the executive arm of government. And, and the fourth is controlling the public purse. Okay, but um, it appears that we, we have a certain upside down understanding mm -hmm. of the role of members of parliament and so we try to relegate their representative function to the background, but that is the foremost function. Right. Okay, some political science 101 ongoing as well as we all await some of the other results that are coming in. Let's uh, go to the um, K2 North constituency to find out what exactly has been happening there. Our reporter uh, will be joining us shortly to let us know. Mawena Egbeta is the man on the ground. Mawena, good evening. Thank you for uh, telling us. We saw the kind of interest when results were being declared. What else do we know now? From all indications which we carry to you live on your election command center, Eric Edemagbana emerged victorious with one crucial vote. We've come to his house where obviously a mass of supporters are teeming and jubilating in ecstasy over that victory just to pick his store. Edem, how did you pull this off? One vote, it was a close contest, there was a, a demand for a recount after that, just one victory win and yet it remained the same. How did this happen? Let me say a big thank you to God Almighty for how far his brothers. I've always believed that God is a lifter of men, and I've never doubted the divinity uh, aspect of political campaigns. I, even when things got very, very tight, I knew God was going to help us pull through, and pulling through with a single vote is, is just one of the ways by which God wants to tell us a story that he is involved in this particular story. I'm excited and I'm grateful to the entire constituency, to all my team members, and to each and every delegate. Let me also congratulate my opponents for giving me um, um, a very keen, a very close contest. But my victory is not um, an individual or personal victory. It is a victory for all the young people in Ghana. It is a victory for uh, young, ambitious uh, people who are so determined to achieve something. Uh, it is a victory for all young people who believe so much in themselves and believe that they can do something to positively impact society. It is their victory. I fought against odds. Regional executives were in my constituency campaigning against me. Volta regional executives? Volta regional executives. Many of them were in my constituency campaigning against me. Many constituency executives were campaigning against me. I went through a very, very difficult campaign. Many lies, fabrications against my person, but we remain focused. And look, I had a team of young people who were ready to fight against all odds. And we kept motivating ourselves that victory was the aim and we we're going to win. And look, I am a very, very, very devout Christian. I've forgiven all the people for all the things they said about me, all the lies that they said about me, all the fabrications, all the schemings. I'm ready to work with each and every one of them. I'm ready to collaborate with all my other aspirants who were in the contest. I will work with them for us to build the Ketu North that we want. I believe that today begins a new dawn. It is an era of a new dawn for Ketu North and for politics in Ghana as a whole. We are excited. We are grateful to God. I'm grateful to everybody who played a role in this crucial victory. It is not my victory. It is a victory for that young child who is looking forward to a political leadership that can inspire him or her to reach 
his or her full potentials. It is not my victory. It is the victory of that old 78-year-old woman at the branch level who is looking for a properly working welfare scheme as a branch executive of the NDC. It is not my victory. It is victory for young people who are yearning for jobs in Ketu North. I am ready to work with everybody for us to build the Ketu North that we want. I thank you all. I thank everybody who was involved in this story. Just coming here, we've been picking indications of some happenings from the voting area in relation to the victory and that one margin of vote challenges even after a recount. I believe you've picked word of happenings like that. Responses to that? Nothing can change the victory. Nothing will change the results. I rather went into a contest where the system was against me. I went into a contest where even on the day of vetting, some constituency executives were scheming to have me disqualified. I went into a contest where on the day of voting, regional and constituency executives were here running a very, very, very terrible campaign against me, campaign of lies. And so they had a system. They were in charge of the process. But you know something about God? He always lived his own. And so God despite all these challenges came through for us and victory is ours and so we are happy we are happy for whatever has happened we are excited that we won with a single vote margin and we know that we are going to work to justify the support that came from the members of the ndc and the branch executives here the concern going forward will be that sense of animosity and maybe it's not even a sense because you have spoken quite clearly to attacks against your person in the lead up to this contest and even from regional executives i want to push you to mention names even if you can but the animosity that appears to exist within the ketu north constituency which is bearing down from regional executives that you say how do you navigate all of this going forward because the the party's motto is victory in 2024 hello let me say something very important that i am a very very responsible leader i'm a peace-loving person and i know when to build consensus when we have work to do i have forgiven everyone even at the peak of the campaign of lies whenever i see them i laugh with them i give them hug i shake them and all of that and so i don't have a problem with anybody i don't have a challenge with anyone who campaigned against me i was focused from tomorrow morning I will begin going to all my other aspirants who lost and talk to them that we need everybody on board. And the delegates will tell you, whenever I came to their branches to campaign, my first five minutes was dedicated to preaching unity because Ketu North as a constituency cannot develop without unity. And one thing that I'm very grateful for is that we have a father who is very ready to help us unite and close our ranks. The Honorable Dr. James Kruse Averji is, 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 is always available to provide the support that we need as a constituency. The constituency chairman, um, Chairman Old Soldier, Chairman Derek Bismarck Adribate is also ready to help us patch all the, uh, the uh, put all the pieces together. So there is no animosity as, 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 as far as I am concerned. Yes, things were done. Yes, things were said. Yes, regional youth organizer, for example, was in a constituency doing all sorts of things against me. But tomorrow morning, I will discuss with, me, with him how we are going to mobilize the youth of Volta region, the youth of Ketunov together for victory. I'm not a person who holds grudges. And that is one of the reasons why no one can stop my rise in politics because it is only God who makes it possible. So for me, I've forgiven all of them. I've forgiven Deputy Secretary for his campaign of lies. I've forgiven constituency executives who were all out. I've forgiven everybody. Trust me, tomorrow morning, I will start getting to each and every one of them. I will invite them on board for us to build the curtain of that we want together. Right, then that's Eric Hedemagbana, the uh, elected, really, uh, parliamentary candidate of the opposition national democratic congress in the k2 north constituency you heard him speak and mention the many challenges in the lead up to this victory but he says that it is a victory that is synonymous or indicative of the presence of god in the rise of his politics eric mawenegbeta back to you in the studio
Thank you very much, uh, Eric Maona Agbeta, and uh, congratulations to Adam Agbana as well. And uh, definitely we are staying on the results coming, coming in, and then we'll be subjecting some of them to, you know, our in-studio conversations. Straight now to the Central Front Plains constituency, where for uh, over 12 years of occupying the Central Front Plains seat, Dr. Alex Adomako has lost it in his fourth attempt. Hajia Afra Nasira beat competition from Dr. Dufour II, or Dr. Dufour, um, yes, Dr. Dufour II, I should say, to clinch the NDC 2024 parliamentary bid. William Evans Inkum has come through with his report. Well, it's been a very pulsating contest in the Setra Front Plains constituency, popularly known as Drobonso. For the very first time in the history of this constituency, a woman has snatched the sole ticket to contest for the National Democratic Congress going into the 2024 parliamentary election. Hajian Afra Nasira is the new candidate who has unseated Alex Adomako, who has occupied the seat since 2012. And this is how she put it. Everybody asking, how did you do it? The will of Allah. Mm. Yes, it's the will of Allah. And this is a win for all of us. It's a win for Sasha Farm, please. And I want to take this opportunity to congratulate my other opponents and also the people of Sasha Farm, please. Mm. Let's all come together and make Sasha Farm, please, a better place. Thank you. You, you have not just made a mere history. I mean, since the creation of this particular constituency, no woman. I mean, even from your party has ever had this feat, and you are—you have done it. How does that make you feel? Like I said, it's the will of Allah. William Evans Inkum, TV3 News, Drobonso. Right. So clearly, um, it looks as though the uh, Central Front Plains now is going to be represented by a lady on the ticket of the NDC going into the 2024 elections. Let's come in studio now and have a conversation on these two um, uh, stories we've brought to you in the, uh, the last few minutes, having to do with uh, Eda Magbana winning, you know, and then also uh, the fact that um, Dr. Dufour II failed to win Although earlier or prior to the elections, there were stories and uh, many, some of which were brought to you of how he had personally developed the area and was investing and putting resources um, into the area, trying to get the people to see that if they give him the nod, he was going to be a better representative for them in parliament. That didn't seem to have gone his way. Why did this happen? Do we know? Probably the sins of the fathers already affecting the sons. Let's come in studio now. Professor Ransford Jampo is still with us. Prof. Well, on Adam and Agbana's um, victory, I am very happy. Adam was um, a former student of mine. I taught him political science. Um, a very young, dynamic, and astute young man. Um, Occasionally, he visited me even after school, and we spoke. Um, he told me about his ambition mm. to go to parliament, and I gave him all my blessing. And I have so many students, you know, in parliament um, today, and sometimes it makes me proud when yeah. I see them. The Kujita Black as well, my, okay. uh, my students. And so um, he's done well for himself. Apart from the fact that he is a very young, and dynamic um, young person. He's also a God-fearing person, as you could hear. Um, he interpreting or ascribing his um, one, one difference victory to the handiwork of God. And I think I, I like people like that who tend to also point to God and give all the glory to God for whatever feat they are able to um, and whatever sources they are able to um, chalk in life. I think still being a young man, there are so many things that he will still have to learn. And so um, we'll continue to school and talk to him. It is absolutely unnecessary to talk about how the original executive schemed against you, particularly when you've emerged victorious. It's not necessary because you still need all of them um, to work with you after you've been 
so on in um, to parliament and so we keep talking to him that i mean some of these things he's a young man the good thing about him is that he listens and so we we'll keep drawing his attention to some of these things some more. I mean, whether you like it or not, you can't have everybody liking you. In fact, you have a problem if you are, if, if all human beings around you like you. Mm. <laughs> mm. You, have, you have a big problem. Mm. And so it is important for you to appreciate the fact that success and victory becomes sweeter when, when you know that you have enemies. You made victorious <laughs> over them. And so they must be there to make your success enjoyable. Right. Uh -huh. So having been successful, having won, they should, you should sound a certain way to make it easier for them to come and join you to prosecute your bigger campaign agenda. And so, like I said, we'll keep um, whispering some of these um, indubitable truths to them. On Kobnaji 4 Junior, I think I've already made my... Uh, views about him. I think that um, uh, when the father started um, this campaign of going to court at last minute and all that, I threw a caution to him that, look, he should tell his father not to jeopardize his own political uh, electoral fortunes. And um, I was hoping that the father, rather than threatening court actions and bringing the confusions that were were brought on the party would have been in the constituency campaigning for him. I spent a long time litigating in a battle that that was already outmoded and lost at birth. Mm -hmm. uh, so going to the constituency, you know, in elections and electoral politics, last minute campaign are very crucial. Okay, but you abandoned the young man and he did so many things that did not endear you to the party. And you should know that the sins of the fathers in electoral politics are oftentimes visited on their children. Mm. And so that's how come um, we've, uh, he's experienced a kind of defeat. It's quite painful. You could, you could tell. I mean, look at how I see it in as the party. It has affected positively the electoral fortunes of his own son. Mm. Uh, so his son has won. And so um, uh, next time, maybe I, I'm not... I'm, would, not, would I'm, have, not, I'm not old enough to um, cancel um, Dr. Dufour, but I was thinking that at age 80, he's seen it all. He should have thought about the f electoral fortunes of the son more than his own electoral fortunes. After all, good fathers would always seek the better interest or the best interest of their, of their children more than their own interest. So he should, have, he should have concentrated more on the electoral fortunes of his son. Because as for you, 80 years, you're already gone. <laughs> would, would, uh, would there have been any difference if he didn't go to court? If, for instance, the last three days prior to the elections did not play out, where he had to go to court, finally withdrawing, people say he wasted the time of uh, the, the party and executive. Would there have been any difference there in that been, sequence? There, 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 there would happen? have been a lot of difference here if he had spent time campaigning um, for his son in the constituency, rather than spending much time um, going about. You see, first of all, the, the, the decision, his decision to even contest itself is, is questionable. What, what, what did he see? You see, you, you cannot, I said earlier that, look, an unexamined life, according to Socrates, is not worth living. So to put yourself into that situation or a position that you want to contest, an election would require that you would do some background preliminary scientific research to, to assess your chances. Elections or winning elections is not about propaganda and hearsay and it's about and, and emotions. It's not about emotions, it's not about how you feel, it's not about the caliber of people who have surrounded you and who are bitter and they are disgruntled and they want to um, score um, um, points. Uh, political points. It, it's not about them. And mm. so, th in the first place, it was a miscalculation on his part to put himself there as wanting to contest John Mam because clearly he had no chance. I heard some, some one of his people saying that they had done their own research 
and um, yeah, he was going to win by 60 percent i said what kind of research is that i had also done a lot of research research without research i don't eat okay we had done a lot of research that showed that he was going nowhere and so in in our unfortunately in our part of the world um, in the lead up to elections you have a lot of stomach direction elections elections ma whose outcomes are manufactured in bedrooms mm. and and uh, churned out as if they are empirical truths um, that are, are, are used to bring a lot of confusion so he should not have contested in the first he should have um, been more interested in the electoral fortunes of his son who will be so who is coming to succeed him right and so at your age if you so what was he looking for even if you are made president mm. where is the strength to be able to 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 think on your feet where is the strength to be able to sustain effective dialogue and discourse do, mm. uh, um, at international conferences my father was old you go engage him he's talking to you the first five ten minutes he sleeps mm. okay you, you wake him up and then he's talking to you then he asks what, what was i talking about if you are old you are old. Mm. You've contributed your quota. Go away and let other people come to continue. Mm. There should be end to service, uh, public service. You cannot serve in perpetuity. Mm -hmm. It gets to a certain time. You relax. You take care of your grandchildren. You take your medication so that you can live <laughs> more. Uh, you can live longer. Prof. Jampo is with us in studio. We are having a conversation about the NDC's primaries. Um, apart from the Asawase constituency where voting is still underway, we are getting results that are coming in. One other interesting constituency that we actually brought you uh, results from earlier is the Ningo Pram Pram constituency where Sam George has been re-elected by the NDC delegates to represent them in parliament again. No, I mean, to represent them in the 2024 elections against uh, the other political uh, contenders. Let's listen to him moments after the uh, declaration of results, then we'll uh, bring you some quick updates from the NDC party headquarters where the final result of the presidential flag bearership slot will be announced. Uh, I made the comments. I made the comments earlier on that this was not going to be just a victory. It was going to be a landslide victory. To Almighty God, my source, my strength, my being. I owe it all to Jesus and I thank him for it. To my family, my wife, my three lovely kids who prayed for me on Friday morning before I left home and told me to come home with victory. My parents who stood by me, I'm grateful. To my constituency executives, the 25 out of the 28 who stood with me through thick and thin, I owe them a ton of gratitude. To the branch executives of Ningo Pram Pram, you opened your doors to me. You embraced my message. You rewarded loyalty and hard work. I can only make you one promise, the delegates and people of Ningo Pram Pram. Sam George will work even harder in the next parliament. Our next target is to achieve 100,000 votes for the NDC and John Dramani Mahama in the 2024 elections and make sure that President Mahama is sworn in at the Black Star Square on the 7th of January, 2025. One of the things that they've said against you in the past, you know, most of the delegates, is the fact that when they, when they ask you why you're not bringing much development to them, the, the response you give to them is that your mom is still in the kitchen. Uh, you've won with this resounding victory. There's a need for you to extend some sort of olive branch. What is going to be your approach and also restating to them or restating to them the role of an MP because it does appear they do not understand you when you tell them what your role as an MP is. You must have been speaking to the minority dissenting view voices and views. The majority views in Ingo Pram Pram appreciates the work that Sam George is doing as a member of parliament and that's evidenced in the results. Anyone who wants to work with us is welcome. But my team and I are focused. We are well capable and able to work on our own. 
and deliver victory. We've done it before, four years ago. They turned their backs on us, even after we extended an olive branch to them. They decided not to work with us. Four years ago, in, 20, in, 20, in, in 2016, they actually preached skirt and blouse after we extended an olive branch to them. For us, our, our way is forward. We look neither east or west, we look forward. We're focused on the job. My team and I will deliver 100,000 votes. Anybody who wants to join us is welcome. Let's catch a bit of what, what the delegates are saying, you know, this is for the support. All right, so that's from the Ningo Pram Pram constituency in the Greater Accra region. We're taking a quick trip to the Ashanti region, specifically Asawasi, where we are told some tension is building up. Ibrahim Abubakar, um, he's joined us. Ibrahim, good evening again. You earlier told us that voting was still underway. Everything looked peaceful. What's uh, the latest? So, Martin, um, voting just ended. Um, just, at the way, just when the voting ended, the... Um, aspirant, the other aspirant, Mr. Udu Mubarak, um, came in uh, wanting to vote. He was here in the afternoon, uh, but he didn't vote. We don't know the reason why he didn't vote in the afternoon. He left and went back. So just when they were about to close the elections, he came here wanting to vote. And they were saying they will not allow him to vote because time had already gone. So that is the confusion you are seeing. Um, here, the police is finding it very, very difficult to control the crowd here. Yes, and uh, Ibrahim, we can see on our screens that uh, there seem to be some heckling here and there. Was he in the queue at the time of uh, closing of the polls? Because the last time we spoke, you said there were about 100 people uh, that were in the queue to vote. Was he part of those that were in the queue? No, no, he wasn't part of those uh, who were in the queue. He came just a few minutes ago, and that is soon you see on the short term, um, which is also what is that. And his people are also insisting that um, they will allow him to vote and what will happen to happen. But I think currently they have decided to take him away because the tension is building here, and his people, I would say his supporters, are taking him out. Of the voting center. So, so is it just he um, that is being prevented to vote, or there are other people who are also uh, are not allowed to vote? No, he, he was the only one who was prevented voting. You know, like I earlier said, we have two voting centers here, and A and B. And for the B, they have closed with their voting. That is where his name is, and we support him. So when he came, they were just uh, putting together the ballot and he just come in wanting to also the ballot and they are saying no, they will not allow. Initially, the EQ officials wanted to allow him to go, but the supporters decided that uh, they will not allow him to go. All right. okay. So as we speak, that is uh, he has been taken back. All right. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Ibrahim. Uh, we, we actually are also seeing the live images coming in from the Asawasi constituency. And uh, as you just heard our correspondent, Ibrahim Abubakar, tell us, he says the, uh, the uh, Masawood, uh, Muntaka uh, Masawood, who is also hoping to um, at least contest and annex the seat from the incumbent, Muntaka Mubarak, has not been allowed to vote although he was, um, you know, had his paper in hand. Some EC officials wanted to allow him, but there were issues that um, came up and he was not allowed to vote. He wasn't the, the, he actually is the only person that was not allowed to vote. But beyond that, there seemed to have been relative calm, um, uh, considering the fact that there has been some hesitation. So, Ibrahim, your feed, the audio we are getting from you is a bit faint. Maybe you should move the microphone a bit closer to your lip so we hear you clearly. But how has the security managed the situation? We are hopeful that it's not getting out of hand yet. Well, um, like I said, the security has already been built here. Um, they did everything possible to make sure that no one will lay a finger on him because the way um, some of the 
NDC supporters and even the delegates um, attempted to pounce on him. Uh, it would have been chaotic. He also came here in the company of some uh, macho men who were also saying they will not allow anyone to touch him, else it will be bloody here. So that is where the spirit came in, trying to um, prevent anyone from touching him until they were successful in um, taking him out of the voting center. So currently, he is not here at the voting center, but um, voting has ended, and in some few minutes, they will begin with the sorting, and also the counting they will begin. All right. So uh, thank you once again, uh, Ibrahim Abubakar. Certainly, we'll be coming back to you for updates of how all of this is resolved. And uh, he's joining us from the Asawase constituency. So we'll would still be uh, keeping this feed on so viewers can follow what's happening in the Asawase constituency. But uh, before we take a, a quick break, let's find out uh, from Prof what he makes of some of the key conversations that have uh, come through um, now. Prof. I mean, so beyond Asawasi, yes, we also... Yeah, but Asawasi case, I mean, I think that the, um, the one contending, uh, the Muntaka. In, uh, Muntaka, should have known better. Okay, at the close of polls, you should have been in a queue before you can be allowed to vote. And the fact that you are contested or a contestant does not put, uh, place you above the rules or the laws um, that are expected to be guiding um, the conduct of affairs. So it is good that they prevented him from voting and it should be a lesson to all. Um, the other bit is about um, Sam George. I, I think um, we, there were rumors that some people were supporting the other candidates um, with a lot of uh, money and resources just to unseat him because of what he stands for. But um, I think generally, he, he, he's, he's done well. Mm. You, you can, you, if you've served your people well, you are always bold and confident. And so I'm not um, surprised the way and manner he sounded when he was interviewed. And we also, if you have served well, you would always be bold and be confident. And that's why he said that anyone, anybody who wants to join his team is free to do so, but he's not going to be begging. I mean, it's, it's about constituent interest. It's not about um, giving fan full respect and pampering people who do not add anything to your quest to serve and who are rather um, um, sort of throwing one as uh, in, uh, mounting unnecessary hurdles for you to be jumping. It's not about them. It's about what the constituents, you know, want. And so I believe that he served so well. And that explains his level of confidence. Mm. He served well in parliament. He served well in his constituency. And I believe the people of Ghana know his role and his country. It would, be, it would have been a very big blow to parliamentary uh, representation in Ghana as a whole if he had lost, considering his boldness and his confidence um, and his belief in what is right mm. and how he champions it more forcefully. And so it's good, it's good. And yeah. I, I urge all constituent representatives to emulate um, from um, what um, Sam George does, and particularly other young people, mm. those who take a cue from it, that if you are voted to lead a people, you must serve the people who give you the mandate. If you serve them well, they would reward you and you will have the confidence to sound like the way Sam George you know, mm. sounds. Okay. Uh, you're still watching your election command center. This is TV3 and uh, we are, this special coverage of the NDC's primaries, maybe along the line, would uh, ask Prof how you measure the representation and the service to your people. How do you measure that? Because clearly there are some people who are in parliament who are as vociferous as uh, some judge, but then may have lost or struggling, you know, in their constituencies. How is that measured and how can they improve on that, especially those that are looking at retaining their seats? That is part of the big conversation we're having here on your election command center. Stay with us. We're taking a quick breather. We'll also go to the NDC party headquarters right after this.
gentlemen, we're going to demonstrate to you the superior properties of Flamingo paint as compared to other paint brands on the market. We take equal quantities of Flamingo paint and this ordinary paint. We then dilute them with water. And now, let the test begin. The gentleman on the left is going to apply the ordinary paint and the gentleman on my right will use the Flamingo superior paint. As you can clearly see, Flamingo has the obvious better hiding. Furthermore, Flamingo has painted a much larger area. You know, one bucket of Flamingo paint is equal to several buckets of any other paint brand on the market. Flamingo paint is made with superior formulation to give superior durability, superior hiding, superior coverage. Flamingo paint, simply superior. Are you tired of struggling with bad financial situations? At Quick Credit, we understand the difficulties that come with transitioning to a better one. That's why we're here to simplify the process for you. With loan facilities from 1,500 cities upwards, all you have to do is call and we will take care of the rest. All you need is your national ID. No savings, no collateral, no susu, no deposits, and no account opening required. Quick Credit has you covered. Whether you're expanding a business, starting a new one, facing an emergency like school fees or funeral expenses, or even just in need of a salary loan. What are you waiting for? Call Quick Credit today. 0302-200-390 or 059-692-0833. We do not give loans via the internet. Quick Credit is regulated and licensed by the Bank of Ghana. Terms and conditions apply. Quick Credit. Lending made simple. The sweet scent of rose in the morning brings me so much joy. Inspired by damask rose and infused with 100% natural rose oil. Introducing new piece of perfume based washing powder. It's like bringing a garden with you everywhere with this wonderful perfume. Take a garden with you everywhere you go with Place of Perfume Beats Washing Powder. Crown Your Style, new Ohima collection from GTP, now available at any of our accredited dealers nationwide or any Woodin shop. GTP, life styled. You're still watching TV3. This is your election command center. And what we are doing at the moment is bringing you quick updates of what's happening around the country as regards the NDC's primaries that, um, you know, in over 200 constituencies, voting has ended, counting has been done, results have been declared. However, in a few of them, including Asamasa constituency, voting um, went late into the evening. Um, it ended a few minutes ago, but some confrontation and confusion has uh, erupted at the place, so there has been a suspension of the electoral activity there. We'll try and get uh, some further updates in the next few minutes. So you also be in the loop of the bigger conversation about the elections, the NDC primaries. However, on your screens shortly, we'll be projecting some of the results that we have had so far. So uh, on your, now you can see what happened in the Asetra Franklin's constituency where the uh, incumbent, Dr. Alex Edumaku um, Mensa, who has been on the chair since 2012, has lost by quite a wide margin. And so he is now being replaced by uh, Hajia Afra Nasira, who won by 211 votes. She also beat competition from Dr. Kwabna Dufour II, who uh, lost by eight votes. And um, we also had Professor Edward Brenya. So yes, that is Professor Edward Brenya. That, if that name rings a bell, yeah. yes, it is him. Yeah. He's also a political uh, science lecturer. So the, the, that, that's the result from the Central Franklin's constituency. To so the Adentan constituency, we spoke about it earlier. Mohammed Ramadan has had uh, over a thousand votes, followed closely by Nana Oye Bampoado, who had about 900, had 989. 
Uh, there was also Linda Asibi Awuni, who clocked 506. So that's the Adentan constituency numbers uh, coming in for you. We'll also let you know what's happening. So this is a Shaiman constituency that has been retained by Ernest Nogbe, who is the incumbent. Um, he knocked off competition from Tony Afenyo, who was able to claw over a thousand votes. Uh, we also had David Wawi Brown. He had 50 people or 50 delegates casting their ballot for him. That's the Ashaman constituency in the Greater Accra region. And these are provisional results we got a few minutes ago, which has to do with the flag bearer race, flag bearer race. So constituency wise, you'd see the names of the constituencies there and the number of votes that the former president, John Dramani Mahama, uh, was able to garner. He uh, was in competition with um, Kojo uh, Bonsu, uh, who is, um, was also seeking to at least Certainly, there were those who were saying he's only trying his luck to see how popular he is when it comes to the national conversation of delegates in the NDC. And uh, the uh, third person who was in contention is Dr. Kobna Dufo, who withdrew in the very last minutes of the competition. So in the Tiwa West constituency, for instance, the former president got 588 people or delegates voting for him. Sutifi South, 849. Jama North. 1,003, with um, Kojo Bonsu getting to Dr. Dufour, didn't get any vote. But uh, if you go a step up to the Tiwa West again, Kojo Bonsu got nine of the votes. If you come to Sydney East, the former president got, or John Mahama got 591 votes. Kojo Bonsu got 16 votes, and uh, Dr. Dufour got five votes. Boko Central, the former president had 1,202 Kojo Bonsu had two, and uh, Kobna Dufour had nine. And some people still voted for Kobna Donko because, or Dr. Kobna Donko because, like the former president said, I beg your pardon, Dr. Kobna Dufour, uh, he still got some votes in some of the constituencies because as of the time he decided to withdraw, the Electoral Commission could not have printed new papers. So his image was still on the ballot paper. And uh, like former President uh, Mahama said, it's, some delegates didn't even know or hadn't heard that he had withdrawn from it. So then definitely some people were still going to be voting for him. But then clearly that wouldn't have amounted to much considering the numbers that the former president got. Where in Yagaba Kubori, for instance, he got 620. Kojo uh, Bonsu got four. Timpani, former president, uh, 905. Kojo Bonsu had one. Nantong constituency. John Mahama, 706. Kojo Bonsu had 13. So it looks like the former president is in a very comfortable lead. Uh, with all due respect to, I mean, borrowing the words from Koko Anido, who very comfortable lead, where in his home constituency of Bole Bamboy, uh, of which he represented, represented them in parliament, he had 392, with Kojo Bonsu getting one, and then um, zero for Dr. Kwabna Dufour. Jaboso, 1,155. Kojo Bonsu and uh, Dr. Dufour got nothing. Um, Yab Daboya Mankarigu, he had 637. Kojo Bonsu had 23. In Gushegu, he had 1,240. Kojo Bonsu had 8. In Binduri, he had 730. Kojo Bonsu, 48. Salaga South, 1,073. Kojo Bonsu, 1. Um, Ada constituency, he had 989, Kojo Bonsu had 4, and then Da Mongo constituency, he had 770, Kojo Bonsu had 11 of the votes. So it's um, obvious that uh, this would have been probably equal to a popular acclamation for John Mahama, considering the numbers he's been able to pull in. And the last slide we have for you, Setra Framplains. Uh, John Mahama had 503, Kojo Bonsu 33, and that's the constituency where um, Dr. Kwabna Dufour the second is standing. So you can tell that he had quite some good number there in terms of the flag bearer run. He had 25 delegates voting for him. Sege constituency, John Mahama 875, Kojo Bonsu had 5, Dufour 1. Garut constituency, the former president has 610, Kojo Bonsu 18, Kwabna Dufour 19. Secondly, constituency 804 for John Mahama, 3 for Kojo Bonsu. And then when you go to the Sikado Keten constituency, 1098 for John Mahama. 
and then Dr. Dufour had 22. Wa Central, 1,711 for John Mahama, 49 for Kojo Bonsu, and then 10 for Kwabna Dufour. Then when you come to Ayawaso West, 1,142 for John Mahama, 5 for Kojo Bonsu. Then Cape Coast North, 1,033 for John Mahama, then 5 for Kojo Bonsu. So uh, from all indications, the former president uh, who stood represented the party in the 2020 elections is very likely to go through again to represent that to represent them in 2024 so in the Cape Coast South constituency though um, we know that uh, Mr. Uh, Rickard Hagan who is currently the one representing them in Parliament on the ticket of the NDC retained his seat and moments after the declaration of results, he had a chat with the media. This is what he had to say. together as one family. as a member of parliament for Kipusa. Mr. Lay, a contest of Nimuni and Ukraine, or today a heavyweight boxer, or fight two bantam weight. Say, a better move division in boxing, you need to gain weight to do that. But the Miyama brothers and the Bino, one time we say, were lightweight, so they couldn't gain the weight to fight a heavyweight. So the fight is over. You know, anytime the fight is over, the two boxers will hang and then forget about all that they said. I am the senior brother, and I am the one to bring them together, and I will do exactly that for the betterment of Kipus. More or less with my younger brothers, it's like a, a heavyweight and bantamweight fight. You know, when you are a bantamweight and you want to fight heavyweight, you have to gain weight as your challenge to be able to fight, you know, the heavyweight. But then, of course, I knew that I would beat them any day. You know, the fighting is usually in the ring. But once the fight is over, they are my brothers. I'll bring them together and we will forge ahead with all our supporters wow. for the betterment of NDC. So, NDC is bigger than all of us. So, Thank so you. Can you summarize this game party for us? Much. Uh, first of all, let's give thanks to the Almighty. Without him, any of this would have been would have, would have not been possible. The Almighty God has actually spoken to the delegates. This was a family contest. The contest is over. We will have to come together as one party to fight what I will call lightly the uh, our opponent, which is the MPP, or our enemy, which is the MPP. What we have done will not be important if we don't go on to win the 2024 election. So at least the delegates wanted to go with someone who know or who they know will definitely win the election for them. Our focus now is to win the presidential election and to win the parliamentary election. And that is the work that we'll be doing from now until the election so that we'll be able to get rid of this incompetent government who basically hasn't got a clue as to how to run this country. And I pray and hope that His Excellency John Dramani Mahama will become the next president come 2025. And I can bet you that Kweku Rekutegan will be the member of parliament. And so you just saw developments from the Cape Coast.
Coast South constituency where Kweko Rikid Hagan will be contesting on the ticket of the NDC again going into 2024. We also brought you a fair idea of uh, the results that the former president, John Dramani Mahama, who is seeking re-election as the flag bearer of the NDC, got in these constituencies. So let, let's come back in studio while we await some more results. We know, for instance, that uh, the former um, Secretary General is, is it of the Ghana Medical Association, Dr. Titus Bayou, has won. He's a first timer and uh, he has also been able to successfully sail through on the ticket of the NDC. We'll bring you some other results uh, as they trickle in. But we do know that as it stands, the former president is going to be taking you know, the NDC into the race. Uh, Dr. Thomas Anaba, who was uh, one time the Ridge Hospital head, um, when the new government came in, he was ousted. He went to stand. He has also been able to win in his constituency. We'll let you know the specifics and the numbers he garnered in the next few minutes. But let's come in studio now and look at some of the numbers that the former president got. And clearly, should, this even, should we even wait for the Electoral Commission to do it? Probably for uh, documentation purposes. But as it stands, the former president, John Dramani Mahama, is in a very comfortable position to be the flag bearer of the National Democratic Congress. Was that even in doubt, considering the opponents that were coming up against him? And as you heard Professor uh, Ransford Jampo uh, indicate, some of them did not even give any kind of competition at all. They didn't look as though they were going to give any competition at all to the former president. But let's find out from, a, 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 again, now that these numbers are more or less confirming the known secret of it going to be the former president. What are his thoughts on it, Prof? On, well, on, I, I, I think you can, you can see the numbers and the percentage, um, if you want to compute it into percentages then, um, it means John Mahama has improved upon um, the percentage victory he garnered in the last time he contested for his party's um, presidential or flag bearership race. Generally, if you look at the history of the Fourth Republic and parliamentary um, presidential primaries and how aspirants or those who won have fared, um, it appears that um, apart from those who went unopposed, um, John Mahama is likely to emerge or he may emerge as the one who, after this election, his performance will be seen to be over and above all um, that have been recorded. If you look at Jerry Rollins' time in 1992, he went on a post. 96, he went on a post. When he was leaving, we had a Swedru declaration where, when he brought um, Professor Mills on. Afterwards, in subsequent elections, Professor Mills won by 80%, 81%. In 2011, he won by 97%. Um, percent. Um, if you come to John Mahama in 2012, um, because Professor Mills died um, in office, um, John Mahama um, replaced him, and so 2012 primaries, he went on the post. In 2019, he garnered almost 95%. Mm. So 2023, uh, you are asking that um, what will be um, the margin of victory? And in my own calculation so far, he's over 98%. I am tipping that he, um, after the general, um, the, the entire results are, have been collated, I am looking forward to he garnering about 99%. Mm. And if that happens, then he would be, the, he can be described as the most popular um, um, flag bearer. Um, in the NDC, um, mm. if you take away those who went on the post like Jerry Rollins, those who subjected themselves to elections, he, he may be adjudged as the most popular. And I think he's done well. That's why I find it difficult to appreciate the suggestion and the recommendation that the NDC should consider changing their flag bearership or their flag bearer. Um, or they should consider changing John Mahama mm. as a sinquano or as 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 a solution to um, who would um, help, or as a recommendation um, to who would help improve their chances 
in the next election. I think it is an absurd uh, recommendation. Mm. I, 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 do not, I do not know um, the origin and the source of that kind of thinking that believes that um, uh, John but Mahama would the, have to be changed contest? before. In, in, he is popular in the party, but for a flag bearer position, was it just the fact that he was popular for which reason they should just, you know, more like allow him to go through? Well, um, e elections, um, to be able to, for electoral results and outcome to be meaningful, it must thrive on popularity and competence. Okay? And I believe that the people have done their own assessment. They've done their own introspection, and they've done their own judgment. And I believe they believe um, they know that um, in the light of what is going on in the party and in Ghana as a whole, um, Mahama, in their view, will be pop is popular, and they believe he is also competent. Mm -hmm. Okay, because now people are judging or comparing his tenure of office and administration uh, when he was in office um, to what is happening now. And I'm thinking that in their judgment, they believe that um, things could have been done better. And so yeah. beyond he being popular, people, his people perceive uh, him also as more competent. And I will say that um, he would, I, I believe he would get about 99%, but after this contest, um, I would urge him that um, he should just put the victory, he would have to put the victory behind him and begin to work very hard. Right. And there is no complacency, there should be no complacency in politics. And in politics, a day is enough to make changes in the um, ideas or in the beliefs of people. And so the current challenges that Ghana is going through should never make anybody complacent. Things can turn around, and so yeah. he, if 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 he really wants to okay. um, um, rescue political power, then he should put the victory behind him and to fight for that power he's looking for. As if I mean, uh, yeah, I as if you know, um, things are, are are normal, even though we are not in normal times. Just like the former president advised, he hit the ground running. Yes. I say, okay. So we are told that his closest contender, that is Kojo Bonsu. I mean. Closest in this case is inverted commerce because the mar margin is quite wide. Has made a concession speech or statement, and that's it on your screen now. It says that uh, I have placed a call to His Excellency John Dramani Mahama to congratulate him for the landslide victory. Just as I have indicated throughout my campaign, regardless of the outcome of this election, I'll continue to serve the NDC party. Thank you. And so that's a statement coming from Kojo Bonsu, former mayor of Kumasi, who contested the flag bearer slot of the NDC with former president John Mahama, um, saying that um, he has uh, more or less conceded defeat, has called to congratulate the former president, and then also uh, has um, uh, given indication he's happy and willing to work with the party. Let's now go to the NDC party headquarters. Uh, Crosby Annan has pitched come there. Crosby, what exactly has been happening? We know that uh, a number of people in that headquarters and around the country, party supporters, are awaiting to hear something from the leadership of the party. What can you report from the party headquarters? Right, so um, I'm told that we are yet to have a good like connection. It's been a very but... long night here at the headquarters of the NDC. What you can see behind me is the platform for the NDC, by, will be used by the Electoral Commission to declare the results of the elections, particularly the presidential elections when it happens. The news we're picking is that the declaration of the results is likely going to be done around uh, 10 p.m. So we still have a few more hours to go. That is not in certainty yet, but that is the, the estimated time that officials, the election committee officials are giving to us at this moment. So it's beginning to look like a very long night. Also happening here after 10.30, 
will be the acceptance speech by the winner of the presidential primaries. And that, uh, as is looking, is going to be the former president, John Dramani Mahama. Now, although the former president, John Dramani Mahama, was in the Bole Bamboy constituency to vote in some constituency, the election committee is telling me that they are very confident that by 10.30 p.m., the former president will be here to give us a acceptance speech after uh, the declaration of the results from the electoral commission. Now, as to why this has delayed, this is what they're telling me. So the information they are picking is it is as a result of some delays in some constituencies. For instance, in the Ashanti region, the committee is saying that the elections in about seven constituencies in the Ashanti region had to be put on hold because the rains disrupted it. So at the moment, some are trying to resume and others too are just about to resume the process because of what the rains did to the election. So it was in effect rained off. And what we're seeing now is also that agents of the uh, Basparent at the moment are at the Electoral uh, Commission headquarters trying to collect the results and put everything together so that by 10.30 p.m. we'll see a final declaration, if you like. Now, as to a reason why uh, they are confident this is going to go smoothly is because of what happened in 2019. So what they're telling us is that we know in 2019 the declaration of the results that happened um, after 11.30 p.m. That was when the result of the presidential primaries was declared. So this is what is currently ongoing at the um, headquarters of the National Democratic Congress. So they're telling us uh, per the systems of the Electoral Commission, they understand that it is going to be a little slower because of the processes that the numbers will have to go through before they are eventually accepted to be declared as the final results of uh, the presidential election. So by 10.30, hopefully, the declarations will be done and we'll have an acceptance speech from uh, the winner of the primaries, which no doubt is going to be the former president, John Dramani Mahama, from our checks and from all the results of the constituencies that have come in so far, Martin. updating us on what to expect they actually said the party leadership said between eight and nine results will be declared it looks as though they are extending that to later by 10 30 uh, as a result of some constituencies still voting news just coming in indicates that baba sadiq many of you know know him in the entertainment circles three news uh, he actually uh, three music i should say uh, the head of three music has also won his constituency seat or, or, or uh, election for the NDC. Grace Hamwa Ajiman has joined us. She is at the constituency. She's joined us. Grace, good evening. Thank you for joining us. What exactly are the numbers and what's the mood in the constituency? Mm. Unfortunately, I'm told that uh, we've just had uh, um, a break in, trans in the connection to Grace there. But uh, before we wrap up this conversation now, let's go back quickly to the Cato North constituency. Mawana Egbeta is joining us again. Mawana, what can you tell us is happening following the victory for, um, for Adam Agbana and the other parts of the Volta region? What can you report? Right, uh, Martin, there appears to be a sudden twist to uh, the victory which Adam Agbana believed he had secured uh, when we spoke to him uh, some 30 plus minutes ago, and that is in relation to collation, which was done and we carried live on air as well. A recount again has revealed that two of Adam Agbana's ballot papers uh, were not stamped, and one belonging to uh, John Agbanu as well was not stamped, and so the consensus is that both uh, ballots would be withdrawn from each of the uh, allotted uh, ballot papers or the numbers that they garnered in the poll, meaning that now each candidate has 358, 358 resulting oh. in a tie. There was a suspicion of this particular development on the part of the Agbana team when we uh, took the journey from the voting area to where we spoke to him uh, somewhere, some short while ago. And from amongst many other things, he had actually called uh, the regional chairman, that's Mautua Bavito, and expressed grave misgivings about the handling of the development. And that's where they began to pick the sense that uh, there was 
the claim that some of his ballot papers had not been stamped. He remained confident. That is why he went ahead to speak to us that he had been declared victorious and that everything was going as planned. That's the reason why uh, he spoke to us. And so when we even spoke to him, I asked that question about uh, concerns and other things coming up in relation to his victory where he sought to dispel all of those. Now it appears that it's coming back and coming back strongly with two of the ballot papers which he, uh, two of the votes which he secured, giving him a vote tally of 360, being annulled as a result of the papers not being stamped, and one for John Agbanu uh, also being annulled, now putting the result at 358, 358. I interacted with the team of Adam Agbana just before uh, we, we, I came on air again, and the indication they've given is that they continue to insist that they have won the elections and won it fairly, and they are not going by any of the things that is being declared now because they have spoken to the national executives of the party and laid bare the grievances in relation to happenings in the Ketu North constituency. And so they continue to remain by the position that they won by 360 votes and then John Agbanu uh, garnered 359 votes. As to what happens now, uh, it remains a mystery because the Electoral Commission in the K2 North constituency has proceeded to declare that there is a tie, 358-358. And so it remains to be seen what the position of the national leadership would be to the development in the K2 North constituency. A reminder as well to the viewers and the listeners as well that there was a recount. It happened twice. Right. The, the count for John Agbana happened twice. When we were live, when it was initially counted and it was 359, that's when the papers which were allotted to John Agbana were done, his polling agent immediately demanded that a recount takes place. That was done. And then, just before we left towards the residency of uh, Adam Agbana, the Electoral Commission was beginning to tabulate all of the results. And because Adam Agbana was not present, we mm. traced him to his home yeah, for that interview. And then... In the aftermath, it's where now we're hearing that uh, the Electoral Commission has announced two of the votes which went to Adam Agbana and then one to uh, John Agbanu as well, uh, stating that the, the ballot papers were not stamped and as such illicit in a tie. It means that uh, there is a likelihood that the election will come off in its entirety again, but obviously uh, the honors will lie on national executives because the Adam Agbana team says that they've lost an official complaint. In my presence as well, phone calls were placed to the national chairman of the NDC, Johnson Asiedun Ketia, as well as the general secretary of the NDC, Sisi Kweti, where they express misgivings to what they, are, what they say is sustained machinations by the regional executives, the voter regional executives in the uh, Ketu North constituency, that they were present, the deputy regional Secretary was present all throughout and was campaigning vigorously against them. They didn't, they didn't complain about it. And now, after the, the results have been authenticated for all to see, they are coming up with excuses to want to take the victory away from them. So that's the situation now. It remains to be seen what the national executives will do in relation to the controversy there. All right. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Eric Maona Agbeta from the Cape North constituency and uh, by extension, you know, monitoring all the other uh, results coming in from the Volta region. So the news is that in as much as uh, many thought that uh, Adam Magbana had sailed through, there has been a new development, which is that after the counting, they realized. So he, the uh, initial results that were declared were 360 for Adam Agbana, for Adam Agbana, and then also 359 for Adam Agbanu, is it? The, the, the other gentleman. Now, the Electoral Commission says two of the ballot papers for Adam Agbana were not stamped, which invalidates them. So they've been withdrawn, bringing him from 360 to 358. And when they did the recount for the main contender, he had one of his ballot papers also not stamped. So he has moved from 359 to 358, meaning that both candidates have tied or are locked, uh, are in a deadlock as it stands. So the Electoral Commission 
through the leadership of the party, would have to run that election again, unless there is some kind of a truce somewhere along the line. But that is the news coming from Cape North, clearly indicating that Adam Agbana has not um, won outright the election in the Cape North constituency for the NDC. It's a very interesting development, especially on the back of what our reporter, our correspondent just indicated, which is that it was after Adam Agbana mm -hmm. and his men had left the mm -hmm. polling area mm -hmm. that these um, concerns were raised or these new indications were seen or, you know, so it clearly shows that when you are at the polls, make sure that everything is signed, sealed and delivered before you leave. We do not know whether they are machinations, as he alluded to in his earlier submission. But then definitely there is uh, likely to be some other election in that area, uh, K2 North specifically. And we are just wrapping. Like, I also mentioned that um, Baba Sadiq has won his uh, election uh, for the NDC, uh, very known in the entertainment circles. We'll talk about him briefly if we do get uh, that connection to Grace Hamo Asari. But uh, uh, let's... Uh, wrap up our conversation here in studio with uh, uh, Professor Ransford Jampo. Prof, certainly a surprise for you, Kate North development, isn't it? Well, you, you, so you remember when Adam um, started talking about those who worked <laughs> against him, the regional executives who worked against him, I cautioned that um, it's not the best. You see, when you don't sound magnanimous in victory, mm. um, your enemies and opponent, opponents feel you may worry them should you go fully or should you be given the not. And so then they would scheme. And you say, the Bible, you see, the Bible says that Yeshua went to sow a seed, and when men went to sleep, <laughs> the evil one also went to sow trash. So when Adam, Agbana, and his team left the scene, then suddenly they said some uh, uh, ballot, ballot papers. papers were not stamped. Mm. Were they, were, these ballot papers, were they not counted? So when they were counting, didn't those who were there see? Mm. They counted them first. Mm. Didn't they see that they were not stamped? And there was they they, they counted again, you know, another time. Didn't they see that they were not stamped? Why did they wait till the guy and his team, you know, had left the scene before coming up with this particular excuse. I think it shouldn't work. Mm. And the national executives of the party have shown resilience, they've shown fairness, they've shown that they are bold in upholding the values that, that, that establishes their party. I call on them to ensure that this cock and bull story calculated to, de um, to deny Adam Agbana's victory um, should be nipped in the bud. I mean, it is not fair. Why do you wait till he, mm. he and his team, you know, vacated the, the place before mm. you, you, you come out with these stories? It, it, it shouldn't work. Okay. We've been speaking, or I mean, our guest in studio, uh, Professor Ransford Jampo is a professor of political science, and uh, clearly the conversation will continue. We'll be back at 10 p.m. where the party leadership at the headquarters say they will be giving us the final results and also we'll be hearing the victory speech from the former president, John Dramani Mahama. You've been watching our live coverage of the NDC primaries from your election command center here at TV3. My name is Martin Esiedudati. We'll resume a regular programming, but you would also know that we have the big old dance challenge final, which is about kicking off. So get your dancing shoes on, join the team, and then at 10 o'clock, we'll bring you a final wrap of the NDC primaries. Have a good evening.
reality show as you know we've tried as a channel to bring you the best in entertainment and bigger family dance is one of those content that we channel this is the made in edition and we every week on saturday brought you these families that have taken part in this made in edition and they also challenge you with different dance moves and entertain you and show that they could dance We've had judges who have tried over the weeks to bring them uh, very good feedback. We've had Ajete Soa, we've had Dance God Lloyd, we've had Easy, and we have our own in-house uh, presenters who understand dance, who have passed through like Giovanni, Anita, Kenado, and others. And we're very grateful to all of them for helping bring all this family through all the weeks that Big O Family Dance was in session. But tonight is the night that one of the four groups, would it be Amate family, Masi family, Tanda family, or Unity family, emerging as winner tonight. We believe that one of them, through your voting and the judges scoring, would emerge winner. It's not just dancing tonight, we also have package for you very good entertainment. We have some of the leading musicians performing tonight. For instance, we have the FBS, we have Mr. Drew performing. We have also our young 